Ladies and gentlemen, Leanne Pittsford. How many lesbians are there in the room? Raise your hand. Queer women, identify as a queer woman, keep your hands up. All right, all right. New crowd, new crowd, I like that. Um, so we start every Lesbians Who Tech event off with a high five. This is one of my favorite photos. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five. I know there's a lot of overachievers in the group, so we can have many, many sessions of high fives. One, la one last one. All right, let's cut you off. So I started Lesbians Who Tech because my voice was missing. I started my tech company, and like many entrepreneurs do, I, go, I went to a lot of networking events. And when I went to tech events, they look like this. And when I went to LGBTQ events, they look like this. And I started to wonder, why were LGBTQ women missing from the conversation? And even more than that, I wondered if we existed. Because everywhere I turned, everything was for gay men. Gay bars, gay neighborhoods, when I wanted an investor, all LGBTQ men. The LGBTQ movement fought by mostly gay, rich men. Why? Economic power. And when you think about it, it makes sense, right? Women make less than men, so when you put two women together versus two gay men, we're actually at the opposite ends of the economic spectrum. Think about that for a second. Usually when I tell straight women that, their mind is like blown. <laughs> so it, take, it takes a minute. Before I started my tech company, I worked for an organization called Equality California. We're the major group behind No and Prop 8, uh, the battle for same-sex marriage in California. I managed all of the data, thank you, I managed all of the data for the campaign. And I ran a study, um, not statistically sound by any means, but it was extremely powerful. It said that gay men gave six times the amount of money than gay women. Six times. For a fraction of the work. Emails, phone calls, meetings. And in that moment, I learned a really valuable lesson that really shaped my future. There are two ways that you can show up in this world, only two. And it's with your time and your money. And your money is a lot more scalable. And so I made a choice. I wanted to be a lesbian who showed up with both their time and their money. I wanted a seat at the table. I wanted a voice. I wanted to be a lesbian who wasn't afraid to use all of my power, including my economic power, to create the world I wanted to live in. And let me be clear. I want to live in a world where women make more money than men. <laughs> I want to live in a world where no one can lose their job because of their sexuality or gender identity. I want to live in a world where transgender women of color are not being murdered. I want to live in a world where a Congress actually reflects the people who live in this country. And I want to live in a world where there is a black, lesbian, President. And I have to be honest, we're a little farther today from this world than I thought we would be. But there is a path. There is a path. But it has to include the distribution of wealth and power and more economic opportunity for all Americans. But there's one problem, well, maybe more than one, but there's at least one major problem. We are biased. We as humans are biased. We're literally programmed to connect and build relationships with people who look like us. So it makes sense that our networks are biased. Take Fortune 1000 CEOs, mostly white, straight, male, cisgendered, only 27 women on that list, zero lesbians that we know of. So let me know if you're out there. It's part of my job. Um, but I have hope because of what we've been able to do at Lesbians U Tech. We've created a new type of community, a new type of culture, one where there can be hula hoop contests and good hair, but also ways to find jobs and economic opportunity. We've built literally the most diverse and representative tech conference in the world. And we've done that with the power of our networks. We built a community of 20,000 queer women and the people who love this, I love us, you're all invited, in 37 cities. And we've done that by having a goal. Every summit, we have 50% queer women of color speakers, and we hit it. And this year, we're doing a goal of 10% transgender and gender nonconforming. 
We even allow dogs on stage, not just because we're lesbians, because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> and what we've done is we've actually made the, the invisible visible, right? Because it's not always easy to know who the other queer women are in the room. But we've done much more than that. We've changed the perception of what technology actually looks like, because this is what technology actually looks like. These are Edie Windsor coding scholars, 60% queer women of color, 15% transgender and gender nonconforming. We've built a powerful community. Literally, lesbians who had no role models now have hundreds. Women who are building rocket ships, curing cancer. We have the editor-in-chief of Huffington Post, Kara Swisher, just her name is needed, the chief technology officer of the United States. We've connected the disconnected. So the good news is it's working. Now we need to scale beyond lesbians. Lesbi you know, more people than just the lesbians should have all the fun. Um, we're inclusive, we're inclusive. So we're launching two experiments. The first one is called Tech Up. It's not just a career fair focus on diversity. It's not just a tech conference, it's a path. It's a path for the invisible to become visible and connect with networks that have more power than they do. We've had events in multiple cities and we're launching a 50 city tour to fill 100,000 tech jobs all over the country. Because right now there are over half a million open tech jobs right now in America and that number is growing every day. And we know we can't, come on, we know we can't scale without the internet. So we built a product called Include.io to fight bias in the hiring process. But we believe, we have the fundamental belief that there is no amount of unconscious bias training in the world that will remove the bias that we have as humans. You have to fight it. You have to fight it every day with intention, with goals, and yes, with quotas. Because guess what? Quotas actually don't lower the standards. They just change the criteria because, surprise, surprise, we live in a racist, sexist, and anti-LGBTQ world. And if we want power to move from power, we have to take it. We have to create urgency. So what we're doing is engineering relationships. So a software engineer at Amazon can mentor a women of color in Nashville, and they can get the crucial validation they need to get the job they deserve. So her and hundreds of thousands of people can get the jobs they deserve and companies can build their best teams because there's so much untapped talent in this country. I've been to hundreds of cities, met thousands and thousands, thousands of technologists, and I can tell you the diversity and technology problem is not just a pipeline problem. It is an access to power problem. It is an access to relationship problem. It is a, this experience is more valuable than this set of experience. <laughs> Human connections matter. These are two experiments to scale the power of human connections, relationships. But in order for this to work, it's going to take people with privilege and power, people like the ones in this very room, to make it happen, to make it work. We're going to have to show up with our time and our money. We're going to have to show up for each other. We're going to have to show up for women, transgender people, people of color, immigrants, and LGBTQ people, if we want to get to that world, the world where there can be a black lesbian president. Thank you.